basically the EQ Capital digital mixer. The mixer comes in a work surface and a core. Uh, the work surface is uh, basically divided in, in two sections, the fader section and the uh, control section. The fader section consists in uh, the, the two uh, primary routing program or sorry routing buttons so you have for program bus or addition bus there's a select key that I'll get back to your cue bus your on off button channel on channel off and your 100 millimeter sliding fader yes the control section consists in two VU meters VU meter one is always pre-programmed to be master output or program output. And VU meter number two is the Q bus VU meter. Next to the VU meters, we find 15 programmable keys that we can program to carry out different functions. In this case, we have pre-programmed the Q reset. And we've also programmed uh, multiplex uh, channel one and multiplex channel two. Whenever we hit, for example, the select button, we are sending this particular channel, the input channel on this fader, to the main controller. When we do that, we can adjust the gain, the phase, or the balance, or in the case of a microphone, panoramic. We can also apply dynamics, equalizers, and we can also modify the preset route. We also get an information concerning what uh, hardware bus the, the microphone is. It's, the hardware is on slot number one of module number one. And it is in mic line and it's mono and the phantom power is off. And we're talking about mic channel. We can also decide whether we want to send, uh, change the, the content of this fader to uh, mic uh, 3. And now we have mic 3 on channel number 1. Following the main window, we also have a control section for our studio in our control room with dedicated talkback buttons. These buttons are push to talk. They're push to talk for studio monitors, studio headphones, telephone bus number one, and telephone bus number two. Above the OLED screen, we find the level for the talkback microphone, for the uh, monitors and headphones, and telephone buses one and two. We also have the monitor level adjustment for, for the studio monitors, and we also have level adjustment for our studio headphones. The control section follows the same principle. We have a, a gain control for our monitor output, for our studio monitors. We have gain control for our headphones and for our cube. The four buttons beneath are indicating our, our monitoring. We are monitoring either program, audition, whatever we have selected, and our cube bus. Selected means what we exclusively assign in our headsets. So if I click on the encoder, headphone source, I can change my, my monitoring source. Once I have selected from the list, I just click again. And I have now 
selected USB 1 as our my, my default monitoring. And then I can toggle between program and my USB 1. And the same is valid for the control uh, section. That's okay. uh, at the application capital setup, and we need to connect the console through our uh, lab. We click on configurations and we we define our IP address. And once we have that correct, we define, we hit connect. It gives us information with regards to what licenses I have acquired. In this case, the Muddy license or Muddy link has not been acquired and the virtual uh, capital is registered. I can read the configuration of the actual console and I can also send the configuration. I can export what I, what I have created or I can import from an already existing file. The user configuration is to determine the three different uh, user levels, administrator, advanced user and basic user. Uh, these user levels define what uh, the users will have access to. If he has access to change routing, if he has access to apply or modify EQ or processes, or if he has uh, only access to uh, operate the faders and the on-off buttons. Lastly, we have uh, the about key that tells us what uh, version of the software we're using. Next tab is uh, the hardware configuration. When we hit board configuration, we know we will know what uh, what system resources in terms of hardware we have available. In this case, on slot number one, we have the mic line audio cards, we have analog audio inputs. And in slots uh, three through five, and we have a digital audio I/O card on slot number six. A USB port on slot number seven, and the hybrid cards on slot number eight. The internal modules are MADI and GPIOs. We can configure these to enable or to disable. If we want to use 56 or 64 channels, if we want the sync to be master or slave, and we can also limit the number of MADI channels that we are going to use in order to make the, the operation simple. Next would be the mixer bus configuration. In this case, the internal slots are indicating that we have a, a program that is working as a program bus. It's a stereo bus, and we can add routing as much as we say internal. We have an internal, or we can delete. I.O. is also where we edit our uh, labels for the console, in this case mic 1. We also indicate whether we have a remote on or off of this channel. For example, from the studio I can activate the mic channel. We can uh, have a cough mute, and this is defined for GPIO number 2. If we are using a fader start or not, if we want this channel to be a solo channel, or if you want to execute a remote queue from, for example, the studio box. We can define if the channel is visible or hidden. When it's hidden, it means that it's not visible from the OLED on the control surface. Uh, studio on air and control on air means if that when I open the fader, I'm muting the uh, monitor output in order not to create uh, feedback. Right. Same goes for our outputs. We can name our output channels as we wish. Analog. Channel number one is a stereo channel and it's going to the program, we call it program. This one is the 
the audition and it's a stereo and it's on the analog output number two and so on and so forth until we finalize all the outputs that the console has available. For our monitoring, we can define whether we want the monitoring to be exclusive or if we want it to be in mixer. We can define whether we want to have green lights or studio green lights available and on what uh, GPIOs these are hooked up. In this case they are hooked up to the relays, uh, number 10 and number 9. The NTP client is uh, our, our network time protocol man. We can define it as active and we can define what IP addresses we are using to sync from. Next tab is referring to the routing configuration. In this case we have a, a, a compulsory or standard uh, routing. In this case we have Routing bus, internal routing bus 193 is uh, going to the analog output number one, which is also called program. We can delete or insert routing as we wish. So if we want to create a, a routing, we can choose from an input. We can say talk back my number one should be routed to auxiliary. That is a permanent routing. If we don't want to continue with that routing, we remove it. As simple as that. Programmable keys. These are our programmable keys, the 15 keys that we have available. We can program these keys to carry out different functions. In this case, we have the possibilities to, gen to create a general GPIO, a salvo, a codec, a multiplex, a queue reset or orders. For example, the general allows us to create a, a GPIO command where we can group it to group number one, two, three, four, or, or up to uh, eight. We can say it's latching or non latching. We can say we can define what GPIO port we're using. In this case, we will use GPIO port number eight and the GP eight, and then the key sequence. We can have on off, linking off, for example. Telephone hybrid, an external telephone hybrid, or a codec, an audio codec, external audio codec. And we can define to detect ring, extended mode if it's a THO2 or a or an AEQ hybrid, wait, or on air. Okay. So we can define that when we press this button, we we off hook and we put the call on air. We can also define multiplex. We have eight multiplex buses and we can simply define that we want to use the multiplex bus number three. We can define a queue reset. Which means that all the queue, all the signals that are sent to the queue bus are reset at the moment I hit this uh, pre-programmed button. Or we can define orders, which means that I can have a specific key that is a uh, uh, push to talk key. So I'm sending my talkback microphone to any of the outputs that I have available. For example, the USB port or the digital output uh, number two. In that case, it will be a uh, will indicate that it's, a, it's an order microphone. And the USB ports can uh, go both in and out. Yes, it's an output. It's an audio card. Yes, it's mm -hmm. an external audio board. So you don't need a specific audio board for your automation system. All right. Uh, 
This one is called my group, but I would call it, uh, actually I would call it group, because you can actually create groups on one fader. You can have several channels that you can manage with one single fader. So I can insert a group, I can call it inputs to be managed by one single fader. So for example, I will remove this. Ah. No, sorry. Presets. This is important when you're in working mode. Define your presets for uh, your operators. So we can, for example, define a compressor or a limiter, and we can adjust the thresholds, the attack times, and our release times, and the pod ratio, and with what gain. We can save these presets so that the operators are only using these presets during operation. The same for, for example, the EQ, where we can adjust the, the curve, the cutoff frequencies, and the Q values. Can you do a preset of Q and yeah. equalize for just one mic on one button? Yes. So several DJs can have several presets yes. on the mic. Correct. And they're only changing this by pressing the button. Mm -hmm. you, lo you load the preset. Load preset. Are there seven layers of presets or are there only one? No, you have a, you have one layer of presets for each. Uh, well, you can have several presets. So you can have, uh, you know, you can load the presets for for uh, for uh, several. All, all 15 keys. Yes, yes. Come again and again and again. Yeah, not, not necessarily 15 keys. You can have any more. No yeah. 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 All right. Snapshots or our programs, we can define what how the system will start up, and also the memories, the different memories that I have available on the system. So, if for example, I am doing the morning program, in the morning program I am using three microphones, I'm doing using a layout system, and I'm using two digital inputs and a two-pack mic. I, I want uh, to monitor uh, in the studio program and uh, specifically selected, I want them to have selected in their headsets the top back microphone in the event they are pressing something different. In the control room I will always be monitoring in queue and my selected input will be microphone number three because it's one of my invited guests. And the select out, I don't uh, have to... And then I can also define that my talk back microphone is used as a self-control or it's used in a control studio configuration. I can also configure my inputs and my outputs and I can decide what, what uh, presets I want to have. I can load my presets that I have previously defined, or I can configure a compressor specifically for this, uh, for this uh, input. And the same goes for the output. For the output I can define what is my output gain. Hello. 
last tab is the firmware upgrade review. Here we can see the firmware versions of the, of the mixer. And uh, if we need to upgrade, we just hit upgrade and then we have to look for the firmware. And once we have the firmware, we send it to the console and the console will advise us that we are doing a firmware upgrade. Okay? You have to follow a specific order in order not to lose the connectivity with the console. Because uh, whenever we do that, you are resetting the memory banks. You can do absolutely everything that you can do on, a, on the physical control surface, which, which is uh, turning on and off the... Turning on and off the channels, we can also activate the queue, we can monitor the queue as well. Stop, stop it. I think oh, it's on. I wasn't talking about ah. I can I can control the the mixer from the re, from completely from uh, I can also reset the cues. All right. I can also see what what the best channels I have available. I can also use the memory banks. I can find the inputs and the outputs and the mixers. Okay, I can also apply or change the gain, the phase and the balance or activate Is this real time? Yes. It's right now it's not activated, so for example, if you, you activate it, sorry, it's activated, so it's real time, okay? The audio. So, so if you're sitting home listening to the radio, you can connect yes. it and say. Yeah, we have a couple of customers, uh, one in, um, in Granada, for example, he is operating the whole station from home. Mm -hmm. uh, even the calls he is handling from a codec, so he doesn't need to be at the station. It's kind of cool, actually. But how is it when he's sending his voice uh, over a codec uh, to, to the input? So his mic is actually not a mic, it's a, it's a codec, it's a line. But he calls it mic and then he knows. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Try just to show again uh, on the faders. Ah. Put, put some of them up. Press the one off button. Uh, but there's no audio getting in the other direction. No. Not yet. <laughs> now it is, yes. But if I, if I open this one, I should mute the audio. Yes, I mute, it mute the audio. So what to say about it? No, not really. It's pretty much it. Let's see. 